Hello everybody and welcome back to the NLC. We're getting ready to go into our fifth game of the day. This is Dusty versus Granite. And so far, Dusty are unable to find a single win in their four games. They have had some pretty tough games to be completely fair to them. But Granite, to be honest, they've also not had particular... Well, they've had some all right games as well. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. I, my brain is fried. It's been a long <laughs> you day. Ever, long honestly, week. Um, I have no idea. I feel like looking at the game yesterday, I think resolve who are dusty's opponents have all like been doing better than their current standings yeah and it was like kind of a draft distance that kind of meant dusty fell down if they were facing another team like lower in the standings i'd be like yeah fair play dusty probably have a decent chance but granite after yesterday's performance i mean we're on the granite hype train there's no way you can see it but them just being massively overperforming from our expectations and i expect them to come in favored here I agree. And, you know, normally you would say, all right, if there was ever a game for Dusty to try and, you know, actually secure a win, it would be against a team like Granite. But Granite run an upswing and it's just kind of tough for them right now, realistically, uh, given the recent run of form for uh, Granite. But I don't think all is doom and gloom for Dusty, right? Because, you know, we saw even against the XL uh, in the XL match, you know, XL, yeah, sure, you can say they nearly fumbled, but it was still nearly a capitalization by Dusty. Uh, so it's not like when they're given the right tools and, you know, scenarios do occur, they can, you know, sort of look like they can win. Uh, but man, even against, you know, a team that we expect to kind of be near them in the standards, at least, you know, preseason expectations, uh, I'm still expecting a pretty tough one unless they can pull out some kind of magic trick in the draft. Alrighty, well, the draft has fired through. The bans at least have so far. And for the first time today, it looks like we're going to see that Udyr. It's been pretty much banned all day. Uh, the Gwen has been taken away by Dusty, so not looking to play towards that. And we'll see what the next pickup is here. Rumble Leona is open, and we've kind of learned, and we spoke to Ericsson, that is a strong combination. I don't think that's a bad rotation here for Granite at all. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like ST Junglers, Rumble is that big obvious one if they want to play it, but Granite potentially going in a different direction here. I'll wait and see if they're actually going to lock it in, and they do. So obviously got the flexibility of the Seraphine, doing it a little bit better than uh, post nerfs just uh, because she's had a couple of buffs come in and obviously the itemization got better for supports, but really can be pretty flexible. Still can go bot, still can go support, still can go mid. Uh, but I think I would probably feel like you don't really need to lock a jungler here, but if you want to like not reveal much of your comp, you could just go for that. But looks like they're just going to commit to the jinx. So already seeing really strong backline coming out from Granite here. Yeah, but I will say something that slipped through is, is Ezreal. So I... I kind of expect them to test to lock it in, if if anything. Though, of course, you do have other options. When you've got the Udi, you can go down a more aggressive style of the bot lane. And seems as Leona is up still, uh, something like Jinx, uh, something like uh, Kaisa, plus Leona rather. Even though Jinx is there, you wouldn't be too surprised to see something like that come out from from Dusty, in my opinion. Yeah, I think the concern with Ezreal is obviously he's really strong right now, but if you're trying to play into like the sustain and shielding of Seraphine yeah, combined yeah, with like exactly. the sustain damage of Jinx, it's so hard. I think they need that engage potential, but this is where like the Udi is kind of rough because like imagine the same combo, but you know, as we saw last game with the um, with the Rumble, it's so much more threatening to the backline uh, and really to make this Udi a valid, Sawyer's going to have to do a lot of work in the early game to sort of justify taking this pick. Let's see what the final rotation is going to be here for the side of Granite. What do they want to lock in? Probably going to be that jungler. Um, otherwise, I think that pool is going to get pinched heavily. But actually, no, they're all locking in for the Alistair, revealing the Seraphine mid. And I now expect to see these uh, mid lanes, well, these, uh, sorry, these junglers get heavily prioritized. Is uh, Granite are going to take the Silas away. Already a fair few nice ultimates for them to deal with. So, Orcs, you're making a bit of a sour face there, mate, like you're chewing on a wasp. Tell us what you I, think. I, I don't know why you picked the Alistair here, because I think. Like, in terms of, of supports, I don't think Alistair was, like, super high priority to ban away. The fact that you have Seraphine as a flex between support and mid means you still, like, potentially threaten. There's still Karma open available. I don't know if you want to play double enchanters, but, like, there were still so many things that Dusty could potentially ban. But by picking the Alistair here, you're solidifying Shoot, where that yeah. Seraphine's going. You're giving them amnesia time in the second ban phase. And it's not even a great lane into Leona either. Yeah, I... I... I, I'm I'm of the same mindset, give or take. And I mean, hell, if you're going to pick a support here, just, even blocking someone like Braum, just play something super defensive at this point, right? That, I think that actually like I, I'd actually I, like I, that. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I, I'm a bit. I'm, I'll, I'll be I'll be playing this, but I'm I'm questioning that I'll start looking. But we'll see what kind of value it gets, because at the end of the day, draft is only draft. 
sometimes you, you will still get a lot of value out of, out of these sort of not necessarily the most optimal picks in, in theory. Uh, for now, I think if you're dusty, you just, you just ban another support. Right. I mean, you can ban Rumble if you really want to. Indecision said it was it was troll not to ban Nidalee against him. I don't know if that's something that they necessarily care about. But I mean, Rumble has just still made it through. So if you're talking power picks, I feel like you just go down that route. There's no mm. real need necessarily to go into something like Nidalee, in my opinion. Uh, the thing is, like, you have so much lockdown with the Alice yeah. the Seraphine. Yeah. Like, if you if you connect with a Seraphine ult with a Reclizer, it's just, I mean, it's so over. Um, I uh, I will say as well, Wixo, I said at the beginning of the day, but Wixo, kind of his snap engages on the Alistair onto Deadly were pretty impactful in their game versus BTXL and quite crucial yeah. to them finding their win. <laughs> now, the Rumble lock-in is there, so they've got the tools now to work with. I'm curious to see what they're going to round out with here and put in the top lane, because, you know, outside of the Alistair without his ultimate, like they don't, they're kind of lacking any real front line at the moment and i don't think this is a bad rotation as well here if they do decide to lock in that set can kind of throw out the alistair if he jumps into the team we'll see what they look to put in the mid lane to deal with um well but it's a blind mid here yeah i i feel like we might see something like like zoe come out from Wazzy. i think it's something that's consistently banned against him and he does really like the champion i feel like it's just a polish mid thing like polish mid yeah. seem to just love zoe uh, but if we don't see that pocket pick come out of him no syndra uh, Victor, Oriana, all things he could go for. And Ooh. out of everything, he actually goes for the rise. So certainly a pretty interesting champion. I, over time, you know, it's sort of up and down, up and down with this uh, version of rise. Right now, I think he's pretty good, uh, but you really have to get a lot of use out of his armor in the early game. You have to really go uh, to the sidelines and get a lot of impact uh, going uh, to sort of snowball your sidelines. And I think when you've got something like Udyr that's like kind of hyper mobile, and now you see the top play matchup, Immediately, as Raiz, you're just like, well, I'm just going to go and pick on this Jinx and Seraphine constantly, or rather the, uh, the Jinx and Alistar constantly. Uh, and I mean, hell, you've even got a pretty good time walking up to the top side just because of how much CC set has to offer. Yeah, I think like there's potential vulnerability for the pick. Like, it can be targeted quite heavily yeah. in terms of like the engage potential. But if you can like find a way to survive that, I actually like the concept of Raiz and the Seraphine just because yeah. everyone's going to be stacking, you know, to benefit from the shielding, the healing. And if you can bounce between that, you can absolutely shred. You know, and again, with that Alistair pick, I kind of feel like it is, you know, a pocket pick for Wixo, so there's some justification in that regard. Yeah. I think both teams have uh, quite a bit of engaged tools, but I kind of feel like Granite's composition makes sense like a theme together. I will say that I'm still a little bit concerned about, you know, the fact that you can see this this Udia really take over the early game. The Rise should be looking at contest priority and then can roam down bot, and I feel like it's a better bot lane 2v2. Uh, so... I think both teams have some strengths and weaknesses. I think you're completely right. It's going to be an interesting game with a few spicy picks kind of shaking everything up. But it's time for us to pass it over to our casters for the final game of the day. So, Scandrel, over to you, mate. Thank you so much, mate. Yeah, and, and it's going to be our final game of the day. And, Foxy, what are you feeling about this one? Who, who, you, who you're edging towards? Dusty versus Granite. My, my, my sort of head and heart says granite here just given the resurgence <laughs> that this team has had over the last couple of days but obviously uh dusty can still throw curveballs there are we absolutely i don't think this is a, a mega one-sided matchup either way uh, i i think you know granite has the edge that recently they've been playing pretty well they even beat bcxl yesterday which is absolutely nutty absolutely insane um but yeah i mean i think as far as team comps go like you've got a pretty good like combo on the side of granite as well you know with wukong rumble and and seraphine that's crazy like I, it was a really good point brought up on the desk too like seraphine's both her slow and her ultimate is just like perfect for rumble equalizer perfect mm -hmm. like legit mm -hmm. so so good and there's not a lot of tanky people really on the side of of uh of dusty that will really want to tank that one up you've got set top and the owner as your support I'm chatting a bit of rubbish actually because you've got Udyr as well to be fair but either way like it doesn't really matter who tanks it they're going to be a little bit <laughs> they're going to be in a bit of a pickle so yeah these grouped up fights for Granite should be kind of scary what do you make of the rise that's the that was the curveball pick that we had thrown in for uh, for Dusty and honestly uh, I don't know if you read recently but uh, and I also saw a YouTube video on it where they talked to just about how bad Ryze is right now. Like he doesn't really have like the best itemization pathway and his win rate is like super low. And what, what do you make of the Ryze pick here for Warzy? Uh, like, do you think it serves a purpose? What, what purpose do you think it even serves? 
I honestly think one of the best things about this Rise pick is the way it works with Udyr and the way you can set up plays with him. Like uh, like Hawks said, that you should be able to contest priority in that mid lane against the Seraphine. And if you do that and you walk around, like you have two of the most basic crowd controls in League of Legends, which is Rune Prison plus Bear Stance. Uh, it's it's something where you can definitely win like these 2v2s and if you do catch someone out of position like if you catch the seraphine if you catch the rumble or even even someone like the jinx as well but that's more about like the mid mid jungle combination in the lane phase yeah you'll kill them that's <laughs> simple as really like it's just it's just really quite strong in that in that regard and uh also just like the cleave that comes through from from a rise can be can be really nice in those good shot fights as well we have a little bit of a pause to kick things off. I mean, I jinxed it earlier on today. And the first game of the day, I said, this, you know, get get the pause out of the way now. No technical difficulties for the rest of the day. Yeah, it's been technical difficulties all day. Alas, it is what it is. Um, however, you know, we can talk about the rise and that combo between UD and Rise all we like. You are going into a tried and tested meta combo with the Wukong and the... the, uh, the Rumble, you know, for a reason, and then lay layering Seraphine over the top of that just makes it even more day. You know, like there's there's even more spice to that like, sort of wombo combo that they can pull out in these team fights. And and Rumble has been doing pretty well in our games so far. Um, I'd be I'd really love to see what the the actual win rate for Rumble in the NLC was, uh, you know, currently. But it feels like Rumble has been hugely impactful for most teams that have picked him up. Um, and so you like. Uh, I guess unless I'm seeing like flash bear slaps in mid lane and, and was he able to capitalize on that because obviously even Seraphine, very low base HP can be quite easy to take out. You know, I get the feeling when it comes to that, these big fights, these big kind of team fights around like Rift Heralds and Dragons, you're favoring Granite, like just from yep. the outset. Absolutely. And it's just a team that has rumble really, <laughs> as, as we've seen pretty much all day today, tends to have pretty good objective control. So it's really on, to, on Dusty to be able to at least like stack that first dragon, maybe get the second one as well if you can, and just make make use of that weakness that Rumble has, where pre six is not really that impactful, and you can you can you can navigate fights a lot easier before that equalizer is available. I mean, also um, you got to look towards the fact that Babe has got Jinx, and when we talked to Indecision in the uh, interview yesterday, he said, "Well, if there is a good game where Babe thinks he can play Jinx, mm -hmm. we're gonna, we're going to play Jinx." Like you know, so it's it's one of those things that clearly an incredibly comfortable champion, and he there was I would say one of the main reasons, if not the main reason, that Granite Gaming came out on top versus XL was in that part the Babe Jinx being so powerful. Absolutely, I think any any. Any Jinx is able to get free reign and allowed to pop off will look really strong, but especially this guy is just really, really good at this champion. Uh, and honestly, I think as far as the team comps go, like Jinx is going to have decent methods uh, or, or methods of success. Yeah, okay, I can say that. Methods of success. Like you've got a lot of space being created with uh, with Rumble ulti, with Wukong engage and Alistair as well. Like you might not have the best pure protection tools. Like sure, you've got Seraphine, but aside from that, like you don't have like, it's not a protect the Jinx comp, but because there's so much threat coming from everyone else, Jinx should still be able to find space to get those auto attacks off and to, to get that impact. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're trying to just get through everything else on Granite to just kill, just kill the Jinx, you're taking crap tons of damage from Rumble, you're taking crap tons, tons of damage from the Wukong as well. And even then, you know, Jinx may not even end up going down. You do have like Alice to peel away, who's relatively decent at it. So yeah, completely agree. It's not exactly a clear cut like we can kill Jinx because and, and 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 creating space for the Jinx is coming naturally from that combo between the Wukong ultimate, the the Seraphine ultimate, and the the Rumble ultimate. Just like mm -hmm. layering those on top of each other is naturally going to create space for Babe Raw to just get those free basic attacks off. And then if you let, do it properly and you give him one reset in a team fight, that's where things start to go south for the enemy team. Absolutely. And the low range on Dusty as well. Like, they're going to have to walk pretty close to Granite, and that won't be a problem for Jinx with those rockets going through. Pretty standard stuff here, though, at the beginning of the game. We are seeing a bit of an invade, though. Sawyer is now looking at the blue buff for Indecision. Bit of a contest here. Does have bot pro, does have mid as well. Should go in the favor of Dusty, this one. Yeah, as you said, like, early jungle invades onto the Rumble are a good way yeah. to kind of put the pressure on him. And uh, Soya just very easily able to waltz in and go for that blue buff invade. We'll get 
one scuttle on the bottom side of the map, but doesn't, I don't think, has enough priority to go straight for a double scuttle here, but may look to steal away as many camps from Rumble's blue side jungle as possible, further starving him out of experience, which if you can delay that Rumble level six, it is going to be better for your team overall. Absolutely. Going to be able to take this Grump down as well is Sawyer. Rumble will reset, go back to his top side jungle, pick up those respawned camps as uh, Sawyer will be doing something very similar as well. Yeah, wanting to, to get as long as possible out of the early game before Rumble was level 6 is really big. Especially before, like, the uh, if, if the objectives are up, Rumble's ultimate will just do absolute work. And that's something that you want to avoid as best you can. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, Sawyer go for the top side here or go for his Gromp into the into the walls and whatnot. And then maybe, depending on the back timers for M-Test and Blue, like, you might just want to go for that Dragon, like, almost on spawn, you know? Like, you just go through your camps and then pretty early on just try and take that one down. I wouldn't be too wouldn't surprised, be surprised to see that happening. No, I mean, I, I literally the same thing. Um, Soya <laughs> should, well, it's currently got a two level advantage on Indecision. So there's no way that Indecision is going to contest. You, you know, Dragon in 20 seconds, we know that Udyr at this level can very easily solo out the Dragon. And given you've got um, some decent prior in the bot lane, I don't really see Indecision, Indecision wanting to contest this. It should be an early start for uh, Soya looking for that Dragon if he wants to go for it. They are going to opt to put some pressure down it all. Indecision's in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, and uh, Sawyer can look to get the, uh, the bear slap off, but he's going to get a big, big camp takeaway. And then again, more denial for the Rumble. Struggling to get any experience here. Sawyer may be close to level 6 too. So, you know, two level advantages already opening up potentially for Dusty in the jungle right now. And looking for a tower dive with a teleport onto HI. He, he, he baited oh, out. Oh, GG. Oh, the little S press. I wonder if he's going to be able to get away from this as he flashes forward. That was, honestly, that was super nice. That split second indecision. And I don't mean to meme it with indecision being the jungle, but that split second <laughs> indecision from Sawyer yeah. was enough to get Hess out of that. Yep. That was actually really well played right there by, by a top laner from, from Granite. And not only does he survive with his life, but he's going to mean that Granite pick up that first dragon as well. And I always think anytime you have, you're have playing versus an Udyr, getting that first dragon is really nice. Uh, and also just in general, like the next time that you come to contest this dragon, you'll have Rumble ulti, you'll have Seraphine ulti. Like these are big ultimates to win a group type team fight like you'll be seeing around the dragon. So really good stuff there from Granite. Man, you don't often in pro play get to see Wukong abusing the S key, but right <laughs> there from zero, I was super nice. It's just because you could see it in Sawyer's like pathing. He was like, has he gone back towards turret? Have I got to stop here and go back towards turret? And then he's like, nope. <laughs> oh, my yep. God. oh, it was so nice. That was really good. I just, I love seeing that kind of stuff. Uh, it's but cheeky yeah, you're... and great. It did really, like it saved his life and bought them time. Like it was really good. <laughs> it was, it was really good. And like he said, it, it did get them that bottom side uh, dragon, which is again going to delay that kind of Udia dragon churning machine that we generally tend to see from this champion. Uh, and it's given that first dragon of the game over towards Granite, so they're going to have a bit more time to work with for that soul as well. Now that we do have a bit of bit of time to reset here, looks like Granite are going for that early lane swap. Might be looking to contest this Herald on spawn. I think they have to be careful because at this point in the game, sure. Like, if you get there first, that's great. But Dusty definitely aren't weak right here. Indecision is still only level 5. I would imagine he might get a 6 from that Krug camp. But we even saw this from the, from the last game. Uh, and even, I believe it was the game against Fnatic earlier today as well. If you try and contest his objectives with a Rumble with ult, which he has got ult now, he's level 6. Good things rarely happen. So you've got to be careful. You've got to respect that. It looks like that's what we're setting up for here. This will be an interesting one because we haven't yet seen Granite actually utilize that big wombo combo. And I, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to see if like it is going as one-sided as we thought, it, you know, we, we were predicting it to go from the draft phase. Because, you know, we still haven't seen Ryze make big use out of his ultimate early on. That failed teleport top didn't really net him anything either, just because nice play from zero. And obviously when you wombo combo all of these ultimates together from Granite, they do have that superior team fight. So it's interesting to me whether Dusty even tried to go for this. I really don't think they should. There's the engage. Oh, oh it's filthy! It's <laughs> filthy! Oh my god! 
Just oh. no counterplay, man. There is just zero counterplay. That is absolutely vile. That is precisely, precisely what this comp is designed to do. And they lined up perfectly in that little choke point right there. Great engage from Wix, though. Oh my good lord, look oh, at that. Mate. God. It's like it's like rotisserie dusty. They're just they're just <laughs> over the they're, they're just literally they over are. the fire being being rotated on the spot and <laughs> eventually burnt to a crisp. That's disgusting. That is absolutely grim. And oh, what a combo that is though for Grand. You're saying we hadn't seen it yet. Well there you go. That is a perfect demonstration of how this combo works with this team. And look, we're not going to be seeing any less of that as this game goes on. As these teams start grouping up, you know, once we get out of lane phase and start a really proper contesting objectives and whatnot. We're going to be seeing that a lot, and my goodness, that could be exceptionally scary for Dusty. Man, I, <laughs> I just... Obviously, the gold lead is still in favor of Dusty, but I just struggle to see, like, when these ultimates are up, what does Dusty even do? Like, yeah. obviously, oh look, obviously, let's be real. That was like prime location for linear skill shots to land. You know, like they were running down that small choke point into the blue star jungle. But um, kind of be honest, like if if they could even get a modicum of that in a in a proper team fight in a more open area, you're still looking at a strong, almost insurmountable team fight for Dusty to have to deal with here, Foxy. Thing as well is like Rumble Ulti, like look, exactly as you say, like that. Sure, that that Dusty lined themselves up into a choke point, and so that just made the rumble really disgusting. The problem is, like, the reason why choke points work is because you can't move out of it because of the terrain. But when you've got Seraphine, who's going to root you and, like, charm you, well, you can't move out of that either. So she can create, essentially, a choke point anywhere on the map for rumble to then lay the red carpet down. And so I think, you know, seeing, seeing a fight like we just saw, or a setup like we just saw especially, uh, it's not going to be too hard for, for Granite going forward here. Let's see, now got Dusty moving forward towards this mid side as Dragon is about to spawn. 20 seconds. Dusty have control of this river. What's Granite going to decide to do here? We could see another 5v5. I still think a 5v5 favors Granite. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. Dusty grouping up for it, Dusty looking for it. I, you know, I think I think they're better placed in trying to use Rise in the side lane, lane, trying to find smaller individual pickoffs. They obviously haven't been able to utilize much of that Udyr flash bear slap onto a squishier target in the laning phase. The Swift, I think they get drawn into another one of these 5v5 fights, especially around these objectives where it's easy to box someone into a very good equalizer. That's going to be an issue. Now, is the Seraphine ultimate up? Yes, it is. Okay, the Seraphine ultimate is up and available. So that is that key ultimate that we need to keep our eyes on because that's the one that really sets up for success over the top of this Rumble ultimate. Here we go. Here comes the fight. Ooh. From the engage coming through, as we said, they're just going to take the dragon. Big knock up. Seraphine ultimate Ooh. wins this time round, but they still have the equalizer. They still have the Wukong ultimate to go for. They lock him up with that Leona ult. That will be the first kill going over to Dusty. They're getting that individual pickoffs that they were looking for. The realm warp comes through. That is a five-man okay. pole, though. But it doesn't matter because that is just <laughs> another kill for the Kaiser. I, I like the idea. It didn't quite work. Man, Granite really dropped the ball in the execution on that one. But you can see just how scared Dusty was of even moving forward to get close to Grant to contest that dragon because I know exactly what's going to happen. You can't really walk forward in these situations. If you do that, then you just get comboed and you just go down. But we're going to see this fight again. Watch the Seraphine plus Rumble combo. It does not work. Alistair gets a good, gets a good knock up there, but Seraphine completely whiffs. And you've got to have that land. That's really like the core component of this entire combo right here. It doesn't land, and then when that's gone down, yeah, I mean, Dusty have a great chance of winning the fight, which is exactly what happens. They do pick up three kills on the backside, but still able to get the dragon for Granite. Still in a good spot. Yeah, and I think one of the problems that you're seeing is that once you, you separate, once you split, and once you let uh, Gra Dusty try to find those isolated Oof. picks, you that clearly... That gold. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of gold you managed to pick up yeah. there. Um, once you, you find those isolated pickoffs in these teamfight situations, that's what Dusty want. They want you to split. They want you to be able to lock down one particular, particular target where you're going to be able to CC them for days with Leona's single target CC, with the root from Rise, with the the set, with the, the Udia. They clearly want to find individual targets in these teamfights. So you need to split Granite up around terrain or around these objectives. Granite needs to make sure they're playing as a five because if they play as a five they, they, or, you know, and they're not splitting off you know, where they can't access each other, 
they're going to be in a much better position in these team fights. And yes, clearly they don't want to whiff their key ultimates like they did in that fight. Um, but you know, just in credit to them, they they found angles to get some edges in those team fights. Yes, they lost out on the dragon, but it was only the second dragon of the game, so it's not exactly game breaking or game changing here. And that's a big or a good piece of gold injection now over to the side of Dusty, which they can potentially use to fight better around this next Rift Herald, or, or you know, potentially capitalize on getting a turret. Um, so yeah, we're still we're still in a good spot with Dusty. Yeah, definitely. I think it's a good point. To only the second dragon. Two dragons, not a huge thing, not a big deal, not a death knell, absolutely, by any stretch of the imagination. And having this gold lead now, 1.5k for Dusty, it is nice, and especially, like, you were mentioning it a little bit as well, like, playing more towards uh, the split push or the one through one and, and looking for these more individual targets rather than grouped up fights. If you do that, if you have a gold lead, it's a lot easier to do that. M-Test, though, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna just going to be able to flash out. And he's away. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Not on the other side of the map, though. Oh, boy. It's all happening. It's all happening everywhere. I don't think this is a good idea, I'm going to be honest. Now, Hess is managing to clear the wave out now, so I don't think it's going to be an easy dive onto the Wukong. In the meantime, though, you can see Baloo and Warzy making their way up. Looks like they may be just posturing around this second Rift Herald, although they have lost a lot of pressure on that bottom side, and they have given up that tower. The first tower of the game has gone the way of Granite. Now, it's always a really interesting question, because... Um, like we, we have this discussion in in Wild Rift a lot, and I think it does. I don't think it does apply to, to League. Obviously, they're clearly to cut from the same. Somewhat similar really, games. <laughs> <laughs> they're very similar games. <laughs> like the, the, there is a big question about whether you trade Rift Herald for first tower of the game in in Wild Rift, and I think that that, that question is kind of good to pose in League of Legends as well. Like if you're trading Rift Herald for first tower of the game, is it worth it? That, you know that uh, you know if if you if you're not getting if you if you're going to lose first tower when you, you commit resources to taking Herald. Like, was that Herald worth it, you know, to go for? And I think it's, that's an interesting question to an answer because obviously there are, Herald provides you with a lot of different options, but obviously one of the big things you like to get from Herald is cracking open that first tower of the game, especially during that sort of plate era. Yeah, definitely. I think, I think the value of Herald has been widely debated for a long time, pretty much since it's been in the game. Uh, because it is just that question. It's always an opportunity cost. You know, if you go for Herald, you're not going to be able to do something else. And, and your opponents will be capitalizing on you putting resources into that Herald. And I think, you know, Herald is good as like, a, you know, you, you get plates. I, yeah, you, you get some plates. If you can get like three plates, maybe four, like I think that's fine. But it really does depend what you lose on the other side. But the thing, the thing with Herald is that it always has opportunity to be more. Like if yeah. you get like a pick or something like that, you can, you can get like a whole tower just from the Herald. Uh, and as far as like tempo goes and pace in a game, it can be really, really huge. To break open, mate, like to, to, to convert like a good like one good play into something much more than that. Shelly here is going to be dropped and not actually charging just yet. Let's get that charge down. Uh oh. Oh, that's just more. Why do you leave it like that? Like, come on, man. I mean, this is one of the things that you also see Herald used for quite frequently is that. <laughs> Oh, that's an engage though from Zombie. I mean, there's a little bit of an overstep, I think, from uh, Mate oh. Peter on the Camille. That's going to be a big pick off though. They're going to get the shutdown onto the Kaiser. It's absolutely worth it to make that kind of engage. And now the team fight opens up for Granite. It'll be a denial with the Leona ultimate, but Babro flashes forwards, looking for the execute onto Zombie, but won't find it. Warsi, on the other hand, okay. takes out Alistair, and suddenly this team fight starts to look a little better for Granite. And you can see that Muta is completely isolated. Flash forward from the Leona will get out of the traps and forced to use the stopwatch for the time being, buying some time, but Balu will eventually go down. The flame splitter will do the work as the teleport now coming through from Zombie on the sidelines. He'll be the next target. Really, he's though, Dusty... He, he I, just, I, I oh, he wasn't, sorry. No, no, <laughs> he, no, he wasn't doing it. He backed off. I was just saying that it bought, bought some time to, to recollect the thoughts for Dusty to try and find a better angle to engage here. You can see that Muta has absolutely no HP. Oh. Set throws him into the middle. The suplex lands, but Muta gets revenge. And now Sawyer is going to be forced out of this fight. The dragon's still going. Alistair rejoining the fight, but by now, Dusty have been able to refresh their HP bars. The people that had died previously are making their way back. And honestly, Granite look a little bit worse for wear. They need to be very careful about going for this dragon. Rumble has his ultimate up, and I think Dusty realized at this point, like, there was a window, there was a chance right there. Once M-Test died, you know, when you have the Seraphic ulti on cooldown, you have the Rumble ulti on cooldown, and it was only a one-for-one, one, okay, then you re-engage and make it happen. But unfortunately for them, they were just a little bit too trigger-happy 
Didn't wait for Zombie to get in with the TP. Didn't wait for Udyr to be in position on the flank as well. But still, that's three dragons now on the side of Granite. Soul point right here for these guys. That will be a mountain soul as well. A team that really isn't going to be too easy to kill. And these big grouped up team fights are going to have an even bigger shield as well. And you know what? Granite will be pretty happy with that one at this point in the game. 18 minutes in on soul point. We got pause, of course. You know, need a pause in every game As that we play do. today. And yeah, that, that's an, I love, I'd like to loop back to that, that Rift Herald discussion because it is an interesting thing to talk about. Clearly, you know, the idea behind Rift Herald there is to create natural priority in the mid lane to set up vision and get a good situation around the dragon. But does that, for, for, for Dusty's team comp, is, is that what they want? Do they want to group up around dragon into a rumble, Seraphine? Like, is it not better for them to try and find flank angles and try and make it difficult by allowing rumble's team to start the dragon first and then you come in from different angles and make it awkward for them? Because I feel like if you feel like if you're using Rift Herald to create natural priority mid, you're then going to go, obviously, start to group up around dragon because that's what you use it for in that situation. But then you're just playing into rumble's hands. Like, rumble wants you to be grouped up around dragon. Seraphine wants you to be there. Wukong wants you to be there. You lose all that flank opportunity which i think you need for dusty to actually win this well i think firstly it's a uh, travesty they didn't get shelly to get the charge off that's a terrible like that come on you got you got at least at least help her out a little bit there but i i think there's merit to wanting to be first to an objective if you are if you are dusty here because if you're left face checking to like retake vision that's when you get absolutely boinked by the seraphine rumble combo right so if you can put that herald down first and then be the first one to move into the into the river because the opponent opponents are, are are taking care of of, of Harold doing her thing. Then you can set up vision in the river and you can make the opponent's face check into you. And when a rumble seraphine is face checking, and or, or, well, obviously it's not going to be them doing the face checking, but either way, it just means that there's there's a high chance that you'll find yourself in a good spot to avoid that combo compared to if you're the one doing the face checking. In which case you are, yeah, that's just like shooting fish in a barrel. Yeah, and I think you're right there. Like, they should have used that time immediately to just go and clear out vision, try and make it difficult for Rumble and Seraphine to walk through those brushes, but they didn't. They didn't find that. And then they, they, they didn't even get into Dragon properly and, and eventually mm -hmm. just left their Kaiser isolated, who was really cleverly picked off by, um, just, uh, sorry, by Granite before that team fight started out. Does look like we uh, are just getting a mouse issue sorted, by the way, if you're wondering what's going on. So should be uh, relatively close to getting back into the game. But Granite in a very strong position. And again, like I, I want to harp back to where the, the draft was talking about, like you just, you're playing into a disgusting team fight comp here and there isn't really a good team fight angle for Dusty to deal with it. So unless you try and go for a 1-3-1 one, one, or utilize Rise on the side lane, you haven't been able to snowball. So, and I don't think you can fight them straight up in, in, in a 5v5. Where is your win condition if you're Dusty at this point? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I'll answer that question a bit more after this replay because this is this is what uh, we mentioned before. This is around the dragon fight. It starts off okay because this is, yeah, MTS gets blown up instantly for Dusty and it's that combo again that we talked about. But it's only, it's only MTS dying. It's only the ADC and trading back on the Alistair. This means it's a one for one. So what you've got to do now is wait <laughs> For Zombie to TP back in, for Udyr to get into position, because Udyr's just under the dragon at this point as well. But Baloo jumps in a little, he just gets a bit too trigger happy right there. And again, this thing hit, this engage right here. Wolsey's not in position to follow up on this one. Like they're just not quite, quite on the same page with all that. I do think, you know, Dusty had a little bit more patience. They would have been able to, to take that one back, but Granite able to take the fight in the end. And most importantly, of course, the third dragon. And that's now sole point. So yeah. now, you know, realistically, I mean, let, let's be real. I don't think Mountain Soul is the be all and end all for, for Dragon Souls. It's not exactly like an absolute game winner, but it does make it a little harder in team fights to beat out Granite with that extra shielding on top. But if you want to contest the soul, you have to walk straight into that same scenario that you were in previously. And you have three minutes to figure out another plan if you're dusty. And then the Dragon, sorry, the Baron, of course, is, is another um, objective that you need to be a little worried about. And that's another area where you just need to you know, find a way to find a 5v5 that works for you. I have to remember as well, like, we're only 20 minutes into the game. It's not like players have uh, big items and really reached their spikes at this point. Like, Ryze is, is a champion that wants to be, you know, a little bit richer before he can really come online. Kaiser's got one item. Like, it's just not really working a huge amount right here for, for Dusty. And so when it comes to this next Dragon spawning, which will be that soul point, as you say, like, if Dusty don't have their item spikes at that point, it's going to be even harder for them 
Ryzer's now just finished his Archangels, so he's going to be a lot happier <laughs> because of that. Uh, but yeah, it's just like you're running out of time really to contest Dusty. Like this gold, this gold lead is very deceptive just because of how effectively Granite are able to execute their combo. This gold lead can lead to some late game spikes. Like I think, you know, you do have to be aware that the Kaiser does scale, the Rise does scale. And so you have like a lot of late game damage output that you could work with, but you, you are completely correct. Like even though they're behind, they I don't think there's any way that Dusty end up winning this. There's a big miss though, oh. nice engage, that's again. You, you, fool me once. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> so fool me. Shame, I, I didn't even say it right. Shame on you, shame on me. That is the same place that you got caught last time and you and you just did it again. It's just, it's just the face check in though. If you if you take control of an area when you're when you're granite and you face check into the Seraphine Rumble, there's no counterplay. You can't do anything against it. It is simply fish in a barrel. Great engage there from Wizzo, Wixlo, excuse me, to set that one up. But it's, I mean, this is this is a problem. It's a rock and a hard place. If you don't face check that one, granite can easily just be on on the Baron. But it, it's just it's all about vision. It's all about vision control. It's all about just. Sweeping those, sweeping those wards out, and being being waiting with that trap for that combo, and really when they when they execute it like that, it just looks like the easiest thing in the world. But it all comes from good vision control and good setup. Yeah, no, agree. And that setup was perfect for them. And I think you know I was a bit harsh and dusty there, but I've got to be. Uh, no, but they had props. To yeah, sorry. You're right. You're right. No, no, though, like, props to the granite. Like you know, it's just like they 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 made that play happen through, as you said, just Woo. really good vision control. Yeah, it is one of those things where th these are the things that don't show up on the scoreboard so much, like how you've been able to control objectives and how you've been able to control, uh, you know, like like vision and stuff like that. Like you might look at purely look at the scoreboards and think, oh, uh, I don't know, it is it is one and two, he's crap and he's losing his team the game. It's it's not really anything like that. It's purely just the way that you set up, set up play, set up vision, get control. But this will be a good flank here for Dusty. There's four people on this flank. This is going to be really interesting, Kieran. I know, M-Test is kind of out of it though, by himself. And you can see now, Warzy on the sideline, they get oh. another really nice equalizer to buy some time here into the Wukong Ultimate. The knock-up's there, the Seraphine Ultimate is big. Suddenly things are starting to pop off and Dusty get wiped off the face of the mid lane. And with a Jinx, this surely could be end of the game closely drawing in. A double kill for Baybrawl and we have the Dragon Soul available, but they may just push straight down for the win here. Death time is a relatively long at this point. Exactly as you say, you've got a Jinx who just shreds through these towers. It will definitely be an in here. We'll see where the Granite decide to go for the end. There is Dragon Star available. They're going to peel away and go for that one. A little bit of respect for Dusty trying to make that one happy, happy happen with that engage. Definitely not a happy play for them. Uh, but again, they funneled into a choke point and uh, that really works in the favor of the Seraphine Rumble. Difficult to find areas that aren't pure choke points, though, for Granite right now. Oh, so for Dusty. There is a big flank play coming through, though. This is the way, trying to split that team fight up. The soul has been picked <laughs> up, though, and suddenly shields are available. The equalizer comes through, and Granite are okay. playing over the top of it. A zombie is pushing Baybro into the back line. He's forced to use the stopwatch here. Should be able to get the kill. Hess is the one that picks it up, and it's a one for one overall, but it is Granite that secures the soul. Not a bad response there from Dusty, but it's not quite enough to stop that soul from going down. Granite now haven't really had a gold lead in a lot of this game. It's It's been Dusty with 1,000, 2,000 gold lead, but now finally having that in their favor. I mean, it really is going to be very d difficult for Dusty to get, to get back into this one. The rise and the, the, the set playing on the side lane. Sure, you got some decent matchups, but you're starting to fall a little bit far behind here. You definitely, you know, you don't have the map control, like the vision and stuff like that to even safely play in the side lanes. It's now gonna be really hard right here. The Dusty, they just gotta hold on. Gotta get some more gold in their pocket. I hope they can come back later on. Well, that's the way for them, isn't it? Like late game rise, late game Kaiser, maybe you can find the play. Like I, I would guess that the, the best angle for you is a flank from rise into just getting the Jinx isolated. And if the Jinx goes down, play away from the, the uh, or try and get play around the uh, equalizer as much as you physically can. But right now, doesn't feel like there's a very realistic possibility for Dusty. And with the, the Baron spawning in just over two minutes, that's another game-ending objective that Granite will be looking to go for, if they even need it, by the way. They're looking pretty yeah. gosh darn beefy before we even get to that point. 
Absolutely, I reckon this this Baron will most likely be where the game's decided. Because I, I think Dusty know if Granite pick up this Baron, it's most likely GG. So they're going to try and contest it. And it's either we'll, either Granite will get the Baron and that'll be game, or they'll go for the fight. And if Granite wins that, then that'll also be game. Uh, but if Dusty can contest that Baron, can stop that from going down, then that's beautiful stuff. You know, it's absolutely beautiful stuff. It's exactly what they need to just stall this game out, need more time. They've got some good wave play to make that happen. Uh, you know, they have some good scaling as well. Warzy is pretty big, by the way. Like, this Rise is... is, is he, He's huge, honestly. Like, he's got the most farm in the game by far. Uh, and, and he's a high level as well. Ridiculously high level for, for the context of the game. Highest in the game. Like, he's just... He's making it happen. And, and problem is, like, how does he navigate his team fights? Ooh, gotta be careful. Cyclone comes out. Fourth yeah, but look at zero, but the Inkalizer mm. in the mid lane onto Balu. Has to be very careful here as the Seraphine ultimate lands. They will pick that up as Wixu gets the kill. 50 seconds until the Baron, but a huge wave on top side of the map here may allow Granite to push in for another inhibitor. I think Granite might just be looking to siege these towers down. Dusty have lost their engage. They're very low range at this point as well. Uh, maybe it looks like okay. It looks like the wave play is gonna be good enough for Dusty here. Might be able to rotate to top side, but again, this Baron's up now in 30 seconds. So that's really what you're looking at next. You know, you you, you want to push in this top side, get control of, of vision in the top side jungle, move towards that Baron area, and just really choke this out. So you force Dusty into a terrible position. Either they fight a fight they can't win because there's no vision and they're face checking, or they don't do anything and they lose the Baron. Rocking a hard place here for Dusty. Let's see what they can do. It's not even like they can cross map because there's no Elder to even work with for another two minutes. Uh, you can see that Granite, uh, they maybe want to play this a little safer than you'd expect. Dusty doing the right thing here. They're trying to get mid as much mid lane prior as you can versus an inhibitor wave. And they're ah. actually going to push straight down mid. Wait, are they going to push straight down mid? I I think if I think you just go for Baron here, no? Okay, here we go. Uh, defensive. Equalizer right there from the rumble to just clear that wave out. I mean, it clearly worked for Dusty. It bought them enough time. But the Baron will now be a target once more for Granite as they've bought a bit more space with that mid lane wave. I mean, Dusty are clearly trying to threaten an inhibitor if they can. I just, yeah, I just don't, I don't think that Granite have much to be afraid of here. I really don't I think they do. I mean, you can do. back, right? You're back in time before they get the inhibitor. Yeah. Yeah, you back or... Yeah, exactly. Like, it's not a problem. Oh, my well, God. I, mean, I mean, they're just <laughs> going for it. That's going to be a rise teleport to get a couple of extra steps. It'll be an inhibitor turret at the end of the day. Not quite the inhibitor, but... I mean, you take the scraps where you can get them. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah, I will, I'll give that to them. Exactly as you say. Like, you, you take what you can get at this point. And I think, you know, contesting that Baron would have been really difficult to do. Uh, I, I don't think Granite were un, under as much threat as, as it looked like they were from Dusty around that Baron area. I really don't think Dusty had much of an answer for them. But either way, you know, they have the Baron now. They're running down mid. They have ridiculously strong dive. You've got an Alistair. You've got, you know, all that all that AoE damage and, you know, with the Wukong flying in as well. Like, it's going to be really easy for Granite to execute this fight. I go from mid to top. Take down the towers. Take down the inhibs. This could be the death now here for Dusty. Yeah, it's going to be another inhibitor popped off. And there goes Wars. He layers over with that equalizer. And now Zombie taken down low. It's a reset for Babriel. And we know what Jinx does with resets. Starts to pop off huge. And that's two kills easily with less than 50% HP for the rest of Dusty. And it's going to be now indecision flashing forward. This flame splitter zoning away from those Nexus turrets. And Granite should be able to close out the game versus Dusty as this Nexus drops down. Solid game there from Granite drafting a ridiculously strong combo and we saw it time and time again executed around those objectives. That was absolutely disgusting. I'm surprised we haven't seen Seraphine Rumble before to be honest because well I mean Seraphine objectively hasn't been seen as like a particularly strong pick in the meta but that combo oh my goodness that is just filthy. Yeah, it, honestly, really, really disgusting stuff. Whenever they found those 5v5 team fights, and as the, the desk called it, like, I don't see how Dusty 5v5 here, and they didn't. They didn't 5v5 ever. They would, it never really worked out for them. Um, and this has really been the story of a lot of our games in the NLC. Like, you know, just 
this rumble combination is difficult to play into. Um, there have been very few teams that have been able to kind of prize apart just this solid 5v5 team fight, and clearly Dusty were not quite up to the challenge either. Uh, but anyway, that's that's our data games done and dusted, and I believe me and uh, me and Orcs are 100% correct in predictions today. So I'm going to hand it over to the other 100% prediction king over on the desk.